I like baseball. It's my favorite sport. I do not like Mr. Baseball. It's the worst movie I've seen this year. Spoilers coming up right now. In Mr. Baseball, Tom Selleck plays Jack, a hotshot former MVP in a slump who gets traded from the New York Yankees to the Chunichi Dragons in Japan. In Japan, he's basically an asshole foreigner for 90 minutes before kind of making an effort to fit in at the end of the movie. And then the dragons win the pennant, saving the manager's job and his relationship with the manager's daughter. The dialogue is at best cheesy and at worst completely unbearable. There's a few insightful baseball moments, but there are so many poorly portrayed or just downright stupid baseball moments, I think they just got lucky on the good ones. At its core, this movie is about a deeply unlikable main character that refuses to address his problems on and off the field with a weak, contrived payoff that does not satisfy. Let's talk more about it, because a movie has not made me this angry in quite a while. First, what does the movie do well? There's only two things. <laughs> Japanese characters are allowed to have conversations in Japanese with subtitles instead of everyone speaking forced English. For a movie with such a boorish American lead, this was a nice surprise. And the shots consistently frame Jack's height compared to all his teammates and the general public pretty well. This isn't anything spectacular, and Tom Selleck is just actually fairly tall compared to the other actors, but someone was clearly paying attention to this in all the crowd scenes to emphasize how out of place Jack looks. Now on to the bad stuff. Starting right from the end of the movie, where the final taste is awful. <laughs> First, the dragons have to beat the Yomiuri Giants for the pennant. Jack is up to bat in the bottom of the ninth, bases loaded with two outs, and the dragons are down by one. If he hits a home run, he breaks a record for most consecutive games with a home run. To the surprise of everyone, he bunts, and in the chaos of the bunt, two runs score and the dragons win. I shouldn't have to explain how stupid this is, but I will. 1. You don't bunt with the bases loaded and two outs. There's a force out at any base. It's complete lunacy that this works at all, especially that two runs score from it. Two, this was on an 0-2 count. No balls, two strikes. There is no reason for this next pitch to be even remotely hittable. But this is a movie that doesn't understand baseball, so the only pitches that are balls in the whole movie are hit batsmen and intentional walks. Three, this is a stupid payoff for an earlier time in the movie where Jack was told to bunt but fails. Because in the finale, he's still disobeying the signs when he, because he was told to swing away. So he went from ignoring the signs to fitting in with the team by ignoring the signs? 4. A single would also score two runs and win the game. Yeah, Jack is a power hitter, but there's still more hits than a home run. A single would still subvert expectations without being disastrously stupid. So then there's another awful scene to end the movie. At the party for winning the pennant, Jack talks to his agent who had planned to bring Jack home to America where a team wanted to sign him. Instead, there's been a change of plans to sign the one other American on the Dragons, played by Dennis Haysbert. This again subverts expectations in the dumbest way possible, because now Jack doesn't even get to make a choice as a character. Jack was going to be forced to choose between going back to America and staying in Japan where he supposedly fits in now and where his girlfriend is but the choice is made for him. This entire movie would be so much better if Jack was allowed to actually make choices in the runtime. So let's talk about how that would make the movie better, and also how it would be better if Jack wasn't a huge asshole most of the movie, which I think can sort of tie into each other. The first time Jack doesn't get to make a choice is when he's traded to the dragons. First off, that's not how trades work, but that's sort of irrelevant. Jack is pretty much unwillingly shipped off to Japan. Here's where I'd want a major change right at the start of the movie. Make Jack actually want to go to Japan in some capacity, as he as a character realizes it's his only choice to keep playing. He doesn't have to love the situation, but if the character has some acceptance of it and makes a decision himself to go there, it would make him a lot more likable. There can still be just as many cultural misunderstandings, and it would be funnier if Jack made any effort at all not to be just pissed the whole time and be completely awful. If he's making an effort, but still getting things wrong, it's actually funny. And of course, Jack needs to also make a choice at the end of the movie, like I just discussed. Now let's talk about something that made me specifically mad, that if you didn't care about baseball, you probably wouldn't care about as much. How the movie just glosses over most of the actual baseball. We really only know throughout the film how Jack is doing, and not the dragons as a whole. 
suddenly the last game decides the pennant and the team has to, you know, come together. But we haven't heard anything about the standings for the whole movie, just that the Giants are the best team. So it's sort of weird to have to suddenly care about the prospects of the whole team. But there's also a lot of stupid small situations. The Dragons manager pulls pitches who let up big hits very quickly. Oh yeah, the manager's name is Uchiyama, played by Ken Takakura. His daughter in the movie is Hiroko, played by Aya Takanashi. They're important to the plot, but their scenes don't have much to do with baseball and just suffer from tons of awful writing that I have no suggestions on how to fix. Anyway, the manager pulls pitchers a lot. That's all we're ever told because the pitchers are never given any screen time. I don't even know what their names are. It's implied that the fielders need to give more effort to catch balls the pitchers might be getting blamed for that are dropping for hits. In the final game, the manager leaves a pitcher in after he gives up a big home run. Unlike earlier in the movie, the fielders can't stop a home run. That's actually entirely the pitcher's fault. So, this is just stupid. Lastly, there's Jack getting hit by a pitch. This happens twice in the movie, and both times this leads to bench-clearing brawls. The first time, Jack doesn't understand that the pitcher tipping his hat indicates it's an accident and charges the mound. But Jack played in the majors, he should understand that accidents happen. There's nothing going on in the movie at the time to indicate that he was intentionally hit. So Jack is just angry because he's an asshole. The second time it happens is in the finale after the Giants have been pitching around him all a game. And this was actually framed as much less of an accident and probably intentional. But it doesn't feel like a payoff to have a big fight because... And it's not like his team is supporting him by rushing the field this time because they did last time too when they weren't supporting him. So that's just another failed payoff. You might say that there were good points about Mr. Baseball that I'm not addressing, like how it shows a lot about the dynamics of how sports operate in Japan. If you like those elements, that's fine, but for me, they were just window dressing for a painfully unfunny comedy. So yeah, this is a bad movie. Don't watch this movie. The premise was promising and utterly failed to deliver. I'm giving this one a 3 out of 10. Also, the main theme of the movie is a terrible remix of the generic da 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 Ballpark music. It's awful every time you hear it, including blaring on the DVD menu. So the soundtrack sucks too.